All right, Coach, coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports brings us to Southern California and Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Chargers. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Arizona, 60 or 52. I'm coming for you. You They'll fake it. Now Rudolph. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Vance McDonald, the tight end, was the target. And that'll bring up second down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive hey, back talks quarterback hey, mechanics, hey. right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. From the gun, here's Rudolph. And he'll find Washington, that's complete. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 43. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Ready, ready. Now it's Rudolph off the bootleg. Pass the 20. He's got the tight end, Vanan. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A good pick up there, 26 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. This is a guy who made a Pro Bowl in his second season, James Conner. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. They've taken this opening kickoff and marched it right down the field defensively. Not much resistance. And that's the point because my admiration is for the guys moving the ball right now. They know what they're doing. Their plan is working. But I flip it over and watch and say, okay, what are you going to do to change things up? Because if you don't, they're going to put that ball in the end zone real soon. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. Back at the two now, here's second and goal. They'll run with Samuels and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It's a loss of four, now third down. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Back to throw, Rudolph. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. But well, they took the shot, didn't get it, and there's definitely a difference here because they had a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they pushed it. Instead, they'll likely settle for three. Yeah, opening drive, holding him to three, psychologically, maybe a win for the defense. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. This is an easy one, 23-yarder. And Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. Boswell signed to a four-year deal prior to last season, but he struggled a little bit. Yeah, do you think that they saw 13 of 20 when they signed him to a four-year deal? Not at all. Needs a big bounce back in 2019 if he wants to see the end of that contract.
After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Chargers football again, and this is an offense, Charles, that really has been thin by injuries, especially going into this last week, week four, where they beat the Dolphins. But look, now they get Melvin Gordon back. He did suit up in week four, but didn't play. Whenever he starts playing, obviously, that's a big thing for them. Yeah, and that was the best scenario for them, that Melvin Gordon was able to suit up and not play, because he just returned to the team after missing the entire preseason in the first few games. They've got great depth. We saw that with so many backups contributing to the win. Yes, it was Miami, but they got it done. Next two games are home games. One against Denver, that's within the division, followed by Pittsburgh, who's been struggling in the early going. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now Rivers going to give to Gordon on the draw. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Gordon, a pro bowler for the second time last season, 885 yards, 10 touchdowns, and that was only in 12 games played a season ago. And he also switched jersey numbers in the offseason from 28 to 25, and 25, that's the number he wore when he was dominating the Big Ten college gridiron for the Badgers in Wisconsin. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Charger first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Now Gordon on first down. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Rivers. And that will be incomplete. The linebacker T.J. Watt there on the coverage. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. The Chargers were best in the NFL, seven of eight on fourth down last year, and they're going here. Now Rivers on fourth down, and Allen's got it. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. That one good for 13 and a Charger first. Well, peel back the curtain, partner. We've got a pretty good look into how they plan to play this game. Aggressive seems to be the word. Going for it on fourth down in that situation. Yeah, opening drive. Now, we know this coaching staff, they have traits of aggression in their history, but what a start to this game. They're going for it. Yeah, a lot of people might say reckless, but they got it. One for one on fourth down here early in the game. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. To the air again here, Rivers. Got his man, it's Williams. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 13-yard line. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. On first down, it's Gordon. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I think Cameron Hayward's ability to take on blocks, hold the point of attack, and get upfield 
serves him very, very well. What a nice play there. Yeah, he can take on blocks because he's built like a block. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. And here's second and 11. On the delayed handoff, this is Gordon. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance and guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens. And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. From three yards out, and the Chargers have taken the lead. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point right down the middle, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Out of the gun, Rudolph. And that is incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. On fourth down, here comes a Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. Deep for the Chargers, Desmond King. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line absolutely ideal and from that position you're hoping to get it down inside the 15 inside the five superb caught by allen and he'll go down for a loss inside his own five at the four he'll wind up losing a yard on the play and that'll bring up a second and 11. Hey, Brown 80! Let's go, Heavy. Let's go, Heavy. Heavy, what you got? What you got, Heavy? Let's get on! Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. Go, 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 go. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. 
Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And he will have the first down as he's up to his 17-yard line. They have the first down with that gain of four yards. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first Nine, quarter. 180. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Come on. Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. It, Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Watch the twist. Watch the twist. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Yes, run 80. Run 80. We got it. We got it. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Charger football to start quarter number two. They've got a third down and a yard to start things out. Set, block 15. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It's a gain of 11 and a first down LA. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. So following the run by Gordon, here's first and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and Jackie move 80. laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 40 now on second down, Rivers. He's got a man. That's Keenan Allen. Seven yards there and a first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the... Gordon loses the football. It's loose. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 11 yards there. First down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. They go play action here on first down. It's complete to Williams. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. Now he's the guy, Mike Williams, that the Chargers took seventh overall a couple of years ago. Battled injuries as a rookie, but in full health last year, he caught 43 passes with a knack of really finding the end zone. Ten of those 43 catches went for touchdowns. Rivers on the money, complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. 
Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now Rivers. It's caught by Davis. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 15 yards on the play, first down. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. And boy, that was a heavy set. I think they had three tight ends out there. The fullback, they just, you knew what they were going to do. Yeah, they weren't trying to fool anybody at all, were they? There was none of this show you heavy set, bootleg it out. No, no, no. Big guys up front, hand it to the big guy in the backfield. The extra point splits the uprights, and that pushes the lead up to 11. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. On, and Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Their deficit is 11, 14 to 3, and needing to get something going here as they come up on first and 10. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now, first and 10 at their own 22. Shotgun snap for Rudolph. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. A loss of two there, second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. On second down, Samuels. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 15 yards on the play, first down. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for them. Show them that you're supposed to get the football. Ball 60, up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Rudolph now to throw. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. The catch and run good for 24 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? They, let's see if they let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. To throw again on second down, Rudolph. And his throw is incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. Third down here. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Go, Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. Throwing on third down, here's Rudolph. 
Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. And a nice gain of 21 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one-yard pickup. Sets up third and six. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Rudolph looking to throw it. Open man right side is Smith-Schuster, complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And there was absolutely zero pressure on the quarterback on that play. Third down, and he has all the time in the world the to eventually find an open receiver for a first down pickup. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A five-yard touchdown run as his guys are back within a single score. And they're able to run it in. It started with the battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes it a 14-10 ball game. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. The busy night continues for Gordon as he gets it here. That one covers 29 yards, first down. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Stephon Tua came out at Notre Dame as another one of those really tall defensive ends, and you just wonder, would they be able to have the leverage to bend and make plays? 
I think he just gave us an answer with that tackle. <laughs> On second and 11 now. Rivers got Gordon open, completes it. Six yards on the pickup, and just like that, it's third down. Well, he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Rivers from the gun on third down. Open man, it's Allen. The Charger first down, Rivers hooking up with Allen. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So first and 10 now from the 30. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And Williams is in for a Charger touchdown. Mike Williams, 30 yards. For the Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. That score was not a game clincher by any stretch of the imagination. But the other team now has to be careful to not let this game begin to slip away. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes it a 21-10 game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. A run there on first down going nowhere as he stopped right at the 25. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Let's go, defense. Let's get out the field, defense. From the gun, here's Rudolph. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And they're left looking at third and eight after the second down pass play only went for two. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Chargers will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and ten. The Chargers getting set to go. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass defense on their toes and what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run pass mix and everything's working 
that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a bead on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. Well, Charles taking a step back for a second. Let's look at the undefeated team still left in the NFL. We got Ray! New England, KC, they're 4-0. And then San Fran, they were open last week. They didn't have a game, so they're still at 3-0. We only have three teams left. And they had the easiest path, not just because they had the open week, but how about New England getting challenged by Buffalo? Yes, they were on the road, but you don't often think of Buffalo as a team to really press New England. They did. And Kansas City, they got a heck of a test in Detroit. Had to score with 20 seconds left on the clock to win that game. So both Shut of them up. remained Wait, undefeated, Rudy. but Shut not without up. struggles. That's the interesting thing about Buffalo. I think we learned more about them in their one loss this year than we have in their three victories. I think we would say the same thing about Kansas City because of how they got pressed. But we'd also say the same thing about Detroit, how they played Kansas City in that game. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Throwing again on second down. Rivers, that's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Again, it's Rivers. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, CD, we are a quarter way through the season already. I'm curious, if you look at each conference, which division race is most intriguing to you right now? Well, can we start in the NFC? You do whatever you want. Because if so, let's go to the north. Because we thought it would be a tough division coming into the season because I felt like you could make a case for everyone but Detroit when the season began. Now we're looking at Minnesota. A little, they seem a little uncertain at 2-2. Two and two. Chicago just lost their quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, for an indefinite amount of time. But that defense is playing awfully well. And Green Bay has Aaron Rodgers. So I think that that division now is brutal. And then you've got to throw in Detroit. It's not the same old Lions. Matthew Stafford, he plays with heart, plays hurt. And I think that they are improving as time goes on. How about the AFC? Well, I think the AFC South. Every he finds his receiver, Williams, for a Charger touchdown. Mike Williams with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that can finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead is up to 18 now. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And not wanting to risk anything here Let's late go, in the buddy. half, he'll Let's just go. take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. Ready, 
Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. They'll keep it on the ground again here. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you to our EA Studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. A 10-yard pickup, but it's enough for a Charger first down. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Third quarter and you've got the lead, you're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now a 20th carry, number 20 here for Melvin Gordon. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. 98-98 They'll run on first down. Gordon. And for one of the first times all night, he is going to go nowhere. As they Let's bury him behind stop. the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And it'll be second and 12. That last play, though, not indicative of the night he's had running the football. No, you're exactly right about that. No, because all through this evening, it's been their night, hasn't it? One play here, they get it against them. I wouldn't worry about that very much at all. Just continue to do what they've been doing. And gets by him, and now a little daylight. And he takes it down deep into Pittsburgh territory. And he's going to take this all the way down to the Steelers' 19-yard line. Outside handoff to the right side. If you're a running back, you love getting the ball early, so you have vision to see what's happening in front of you. Right tackle, like said, call big play for him. But don't forget about the guys you always tell me on the backside sealing off. When they talk about cutoff blocks, making sure no one can leak from the backside that can run a play down. Yeah, nobody leaked. Big play. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and goal. Bear in mind, that wasn't a big lineman back there for the tackle for loss. That was a cornerback. So are you saying the myth has been shattered? That all of them are not just cover corners? Some of them actually will stick their nose in and tackle when necessary? That's what we just saw, isn't it? Again, Gordon on second and goal. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here 
not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. He finds his receiver, Williams, for a Charger <laughs> touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab for the Chargers. They're able to widen their lead. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor in effect. The extra point splits the uprights, and they open the lead up now to 25. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Here's Rudolph looking for his running back, and he's got him. It'll be a gain of nine, and that'll make it third and one. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. Back to throw, Rudolph. And he will go down side of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Eugenia and Wosu got the sack there. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Yeah, that old, they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. Barry on to punt as he gets this one away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. 14 yards is the pick up there and a Charger first down. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. I'm going back to you. From the gun, Rivers. 
And his throw here is incomplete. Virgil Green is tied in the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Partner, earlier we were talking about the undefeated teams in the league. Let's switch that and look at the teams at the bottom, like Miami, Washington, Denver, etc. Who is there hope for that is off to a really rough start? And if we're talking about hope, are we talking about this season or are we talking about the future? Well, let's do in the future. Okay, in the future, well, Miami's accumulating draft picks at an incredible rate but they'll have to hit on all of them and make great decisions in free agency. If so, then they definitely have hope for the future. If you're Washington, well, you drafted Dwayne Haskins this past year. Can you build around a rookie quarterback, a young guy, and make this thing work? If you're Denver, you've got to get some things figured out because normally their defense carries them. Arizona, well, of course, Kyler Murray's there in a new system. Will it take root? Will it take hold? Atlanta is the biggest surprise to me in the early going at one and three. I don't think any of us saw this coming but they can still climb back into the race if they can get on a little bit of a run. So Atlanta would be a team, if we're talking this season, you think still might have some hope. I still believe that in the NFC South, a tough Take division, but because of familiarity breeding contempt, they won't be as concerned about playing those teams. They know them, they're familiar, and they have Matty Ice, Matt Ryan at quarterback. They can get hot in a hurry. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Working out of the gun, Rivers completes it to Davis. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. We'll step aside and come back to Carson after this. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. We got double play. 89. They keep it on the ground again, Gordon. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. From the gun, Rivers. And he's got a man open. That's Allen. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Give him 15 yards on that one and a charger first down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. To throw is Rivers. This is Cullen. And he's in for a Charger touchdown. Virgil Green, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game as his guys continue to pour it on. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. The extra point up and good, and that will extend this big lead.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now out come the Steelers. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, and broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Broke yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Now it's Rudolph. He finds his tight end Gentry. And to the 42-yard line here and brought oh, down yeah. there. You give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Shotgun handoff to Samuels. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Before they can snap it, time runs out on this third quarter of play. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Set, ready? 60 Pittsburgh. I'm scared. Got double tight. Double tight. Hey, 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 hey. Four down. Let's go. Rudolph going to throw on third and one. He's got the tight end, Vanan. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Let's go. Let's Only go. three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot yeah. of yardage after Six the catch. Yards. But in this situation, the Tackle. defense was effective, Tackle. able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Shoot. On first down, it's Rudolph. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. It'll be a gain of four, oh, and that'll that make one. it second down. I know you felt that one. one thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of go, run after go. catch. You're tackling them almost yeah. on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Looking to throw again on second down. Rudolph setting up the screen. This is Samuels. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. No. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Rudolph. And is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Jutavis Brown. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10. He's got Allen. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second down, it's Gordon. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Let's A gain go, of go, five, go. good enough for the first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. <laughs> And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Boom! Yeah, baby! Done! Round 80! 98, 98 for Mike. Check, check, 
check, check. To Hunt. On second down now, it's Gordon. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Finally, defensively, they have a little clip to show positive for actually stopping him running the football. It's been a really long night for them, hasn't it? So they get a little bit of a win there, but let's face it. The vision that he's had running the football has carried his feet to the open spaces and to big yardage all night long. Got a man. It's complete. Williams. Give him 15 yards on that one and a charger first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On the counter, here's Gordon. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. On second and 11 now. Rivers caught by Allen. And he'll go down at the 28. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Now it's a bootleg with Rivers. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Oh my goodness, was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. On fourth down, Anthony Lynn says, let's go for three. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And that one will be no good. He never had it online. It's well wide to the left. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, they can probably live with that with this late lead in the fourth quarter. That's one of the few things that's gone wrong. You're exactly right. This one was well in hand. That kick there was more for cosmetics, you know, to add to their score. Not getting it, that shouldn't harm them at all. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and ten. Ready, ready. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. His throw incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. But it's going to be second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A gain of 13. It's a first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Out of the gun, Rudolph. And his throw is going to be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Five. They go draw play. This is Samuels. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, 
Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. You ready? Right here, over there, right? 52's the mic. Watch the run! My 52! On first and 10 is counter. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, yeah, folded yeah. like a lawn chair. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. Here we go, set, 70, Indy. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And just this. shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Ready, ready. Ted Lobo. Because he's the mic. I'm here all day. I'm here all day. Shoot. Now a play fake here on first down. Blitz coming, and down he goes. That's Thomas Davis on the sack. Came in the league way back in 2005. Well, surprise, surprise. First and goal at the one. No quarterback sneak. No running play. They decide to throw for it, but the pressure got to him quickly and put the quarterback down. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Boy, and now they can't even get a playoff. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. On the Can't afford another yeah, delay yeah, here on. as they come up again on second and goal. Now a play fake, and it's Rudolph. And he's going to go down again. Credit the sack to Joey Bosa. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. Well, they need to reverse the trend. The last two plays have gone backwards. Now it's third and goal. Ready, go. Get it. Up. On third down, here's Samuels. Yeah, three yards on the carry there as his defense holds strong and takes it to fourth and goal. Such a long drive here. Three points. That would be a disappointment, but I don't know if you can go for it here, can you? Well, you know, the defense was really giving them a lot all the way downfield, and now they've stiffened. Forget that bend don't break. Now they don't even want to let them get a yard, do they? So in this spot, you remember what the coaches told us before the ball game? Any drive that ends with a kick is going to be okay with us, whether it's a punt, a field goal, or an extra point. Take the field goal right here. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. And this will not work out. The Chargers able to recover. Now, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the 
coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. Yeah, I'm still waiting to see yeah. that number is empirical. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Second down, it's Gordon. Run, 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 run. Mika Fitzpatrick made the play defensively, the first round pick out of Alabama. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? The Chargers on third down. They've been tough to stop, eight for 10 so far. This is third and nine. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. Here and this go. score will stay right where it is. Well, it's still a good size lead, so they haven't necessarily needed him. But this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far. Yeah, and the question now is, will he be prepared when they do need him? Whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line, having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative. Ready, ready. Now Rudolph on first down. And a little floater there, but it'll wind up incomplete, falling to the ground. James Washington was the intended target, but it'll be second down. Now, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. On second and 10, Rudolph over the middle, and it's incomplete. Now defensively, you look at the numbers, another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. This is Johnson. He's got it. 23 yards on the play. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting hey, there. Go, get and he set. puts one out there for a big time completion. Now they got to get to the line quickly. On first down, Rudolph. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Damn. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Rudolph now to throw. And yes, complete to the tight end McDonald. And he gets it all the way down inside on, the 10 and go. mark him at the 5. Here we go, here we go. 60 or. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. Let's go. From the gun, here's Rudolph. And he is going to go down, back at the 11-yard line. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining.
Moved back to the 10. They'll try on second and goal here. Here we go, D. Get off the field. Lee Griff. Lee Griff. Rudolph looking to throw it toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Six plays got him down here. This is play number seven, third and goal. Shotgun snap for Rudolph. And this is caught. Well, they get one back, picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. No surprise there, third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that will shave one more off this lead. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one fielded at the five. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. Check From the 32 three. now, here's first and 10. A kneel down here from Rivers, and that should be it. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say good night, everybody.